Since we can't meet today, I wanted to talk a little bit about Young's modulus and a little bit about elasticity. Right here we see several pictures. One, Young's modulus. And what we have is two forces pulling on and causing this object to be in tension. And there's an original length L and then a change in length as it's being pulled on. And Young's modulus is a uh, uni unit for proportionality between the two. Uh, stress is the measurement of force per unit area. And strain is a measurement of the change in length over the original length of the object. So, force per unit area is the stress. Um, Hooke's law relates the two, and if we were dealing with a spring, the uh, constant would be K. But when we're dealing with a material like this, that we're pulling the actual material apart, we have Young's modulus. Stress is directly proportional to strain with a constant which is Young's modulus. So when we look at this right here, this comes from F over A equals Young's modulus, which I believe in our book is like this, times delta L over L. Solving for the force applied, we get Young's modulus times the strain times the area of the object that we're dealing with. That's the original area. And over here we have several values. Gives you uh, Young's modulus for different materials, all the way up to tungsten, all the way down to aluminum. Um, as we keep moving along, like to work on this problem for a little bit. Hit pause. We have a circus act. A performance supports the combined weight of 1,080 newtons of a number of colleagues. Each thigh bone of this performer has a length of 0.55 meters, half a meter, a little more, and an effective cross section 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared. Determine the amount that each thigh bone compresses under the extra weight. So how would you deal with that? We have our equation is F over A equals Young's modulus times delta L over the original length. And we want to determine the amount that each thigh bone compresses under the extra weight. So that should be a value for delta L. Looking along, looking, we get delta L equals force times the original length over Young's modulus times area. Now, shear deformation and the shear modulus is when we push across something, whether that's a textbook where we're pushing across and then causing shear, each page moves relative to the next page with a force being applied this way, force of the tables that way, and then there's a change in position and an original length here. You can see that for a given force, the greater L0 is, the greater delta X will be. Um, this also works over here. We have the same thing with a diving board being pushed down. Um, We've got force over area equals S, the shear modulus, times delta X over L0. So it's essentially the same relationship, except the object is now in shear. Uh, we can look at this, and uh, I was hoping to bring in some jello today, but I'm not sure. Well, definitely not today. Um, when you push across jello, it will definitely uh, shear it will um, deform and you can find the force 
uh, the shear modulus, delta X, L naught, or, or A. Keep in mind that delta X is how much lateral distance it moves, and A is basically the surface area of the uh, material. So, here we go. We've got a certain amount of flexion there, and we can figure out how much force will cause this to move a certain amount. Um, I'm not going to deal much with the bulk modulus, but basically there is a similar relationship when I have pressure, force per unit area, applied to a volume. The volume is going to change with something called bulk modulus. And the negative there represents the same thing that the, uh, the negative spring constant does in the um, spring relationship, and that is... Basically, as I increase the force, the, um, the volume is going to decrease. Um, that's pretty much it right there. Now, we haven't talked much about Poisson's ratio, but that is a similar equation, and it deals with thinning when I apply a force. Um, so we will deal mostly with shear modulus and Young's modulus. That is when we pull a force either pulling apart or some forces compressing. Young's modulus will be the uh, what we'll use for that. When I apply shear to something and instead of stretching or compressing it I basically make it deform Um, we'll deal mostly with the shear modulus. I hope this helps. Um, see you tomorrow.